Alô, alô, my name is Sofia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled Geolocating IDPs in South Sudan by tracking down a Facebook user's movements. Worth a mouthful. Anyway, introduction. Every so often people approach me to help them with something OSINT related, either finding data, analyzing something or geolocating images or footage of an event. This type of requests have previously led me to go down some amazing rabbit holes, so I'm always happy to help. Occasionally, if the information is not too sensitive, I can even turn them into a blog post like the one I wrote on the geolocation of an old ISIS execution video in Iraq. Love that one. At some point in 2022, someone asked me to geolocate a few photos taken in 2016, showing internally displaced persons, IDPs, in South Sudan. I was given the name of a town, Kaju Keji, and a Facebook link to a post containing 15 photographs, all taken in the same location. After a not so quick look around, I realized the images had not been taken within the borders of Kaju Keji, according to Google Maps, that is. So I had to use a different technique. Sometimes the best way to geolocate an image is to forget about it for a second and track down the movements of the person who took it. If you know where they went, you'll be able to find out where they were at the time the photo was taken. This will significantly narrow down your area of search and possibly cut down the hours spent on the task. Please note that the person I tracked down was a civilian and in no way involved in the situation. Although this blog entry will be focused on explaining how I track their movements, I will keep their identity private and censor anything that may lead to others finding them. The purpose of this blog is to explain how I used features available on Facebook in order to help me geolocate photos of civilians escaping a conflict. Initial information. As I have mentioned above, I was initially given the name of a town alongside the photos. Nothing else. But that was already filled with information. Unfortunately, some of that information was unhelpful. Sometimes that happens. The photos were all taken from the same exact spot. They depicted IDPs either walking on the road or in vehicles all headed in the same direction towards the right of the person taking the photos. Below is the screenshot of the Facebook post. You can see how the person included a lot of information underlined in red below. Unfortunately, none of it helped me geolocate the photos, but it helped me to verify the coordinates once I had already found them. So you can see I have underlined Equatoria, South Sudan in KK, moving towards Uganda in Kansuk, some kilometers from the town, starting my work, and I'm just 20 minutes from Uganda border. So what we already know. We know the Facebook user tagged their post as being in Equatoria, South Sudan. The initial KK probably refers to Kaju Keji, the name of the town I was given. The people were moving towards Uganda, which is 20 minutes away. There's a place called Kansuk, some kilometers from the town, and the user is near their place of work. It all sounds great and you would think that with so much information it would be super easy to geolocate this. You would be wrong. Don't worry, I was too. Although the post is filled with information, it was all a bit unhelpful as I mentioned above. The Equatorial region covers an area of almost 200,000 kilometers and it's almost a third of the entire area of South Sudan. It barely narrows it down. The photos were not taken within the borders of Kaju Keji, because I checked. We don't know if the 20 minutes away is in driving or walking time. I have no idea where Kansuk is and at this point I would rather not attempt to track down yet another town and I don't know where the person was working in 2016. So after spending an embarrassing amount of time moving the camera around Kaju Keji on Google Earth Pro whilst muttering to myself, it must be here somewhere, I decided to step back and think of a different way to solve this problem. So tracking down the user. I did not know where the photos were taken, but I knew that the person was near their workplace. If I could track down where they were working in July 2016, I could very easily narrow down my search and figure out the correct coordinates. I could see that the person was, in 2022 when I geolocated this, a doctor in a hospital. Unfortunately for me, they worked in Uganda, not South Sudan. 
According to their Facebook About page, they lived in Uganda, they studied in Uganda, and they worked in Uganda. But I know that at some point, they were in South Sudan, so I just had to find evidence of it. If you go to the check-in section on a Facebook user, some people will actually geolocate themselves wherever they go to places. It's both amazing and creepy. Definitely a stalker's dream. This user had apparently been actively and publicly announcing their location since the end of November 2013. I'm both horrified at their lack of privacy and envious of the fact that they clearly do not care about these things. You can see below a very small section of their check-in tab on Facebook. The similar colors represent the same location. At a quick glance, we can tell that the user was in Uganda until March 17, 2016, which is in purple. Here you go. So he was still in Uganda there. And within the four days between then and March 21st, 2016, in green, here you go, this one's, they left the country and arrived in South Sudan. So they go from Uganda on the 17th of March to South Sudan on the 21st of March. They clearly like to place Martin Green as they kept going back to it. The closest check-in entry to the events on the photos, which were in July 2016, was the location highlighted in blue where they claimed to have been on May 3rd, 2016. And you can see how they were also there on 13th of April 2016. So let's see what we can find out about Lijo, South Sudan finding their workplace. Luckily for us, all entries on the check-in section on Facebook are clickable, so I followed the Lijo South Sudan link. What this means is that I just clicked that one there. I ended on a tiny page with zero followers. The size did not matter because it still had a map. I can even spot Kaju Keji near the marker, so it was clearly not too far from it. So again, I clicked that link, got to a page on Facebook, and that page had a map, and there was a marker telling me that this is the Lijo South Sudan. From there, it was a matter of seconds until I found the location Lijo South Sudan on Google Maps. The screenshot below shows the Google Maps marker, dark blue circle, this one here, in the same location as seen in the Facebook map above. So this marker was in the same location. I found it and here it is. And what do we see just a few hundred meters south of the marker? A medical facility. And who works in medical buildings? Many people, but also doctors. So if my suspicions were true, then the photos of the IDPs from 2016 would have been taken nearby. Because in case you forgot, this user was a doctor. So time for Google Earth Pro verifying the location. The reason why I need to use Google Earth Pro instead of Google Maps was because I was looking for an old image. Landscapes change all the time for a variety of reasons, war, natural disasters, urban development, etc. On Google Earth Pro, you have the option to view historical satellite images. In this case, I could try to find data from around July 2016 to ensure I got a good match for the photos I was trying to geolocate. You can see two satellite photos of the same area below. On the left, an image taken in March 2016 and on the right, the same place in December 2020. Highlighted in red, you can observe the clear difference in tree growth. It may not look like a big deal, but trees are one of the best geographical features to go for when trying to geolocate with satellite imagery. They almost never move. So you can compare there. So again, this one is December 2020. This one is March 2016. So you can see how the trees have grown so much, which clearly makes a difference when you're trying to geolocate it, because we wouldn't be looking for this, we'll be looking for this. So this is the one we need to focus on, and that is why I had to go to Google Earth Pro and put the historic satellite imagery all the way to 2016. With the suspected location and the satellite image from March 2016, it did not take long to figure out where the photos had been taken. Below, at the top, you can see two of the photos taken and shared on Facebook on July 12, 2016, showing IDPs walking south to the Uganda border. So these pictures are two of the 15 that were part of the Facebook post that I initially got. And you can see people here walking towards the border. So this person not walking, this one is walking. The bottom picture shows the satellite image from Google Earth Pro from March 2016. I have highlighted different buildings in various colors. And in front of the buildings, you can see the two sets of trees with red and blue arrows pointing at them. The building highlighted in green in the distance is the medical facility, so the trees definitely helped. 
So you can see here how there was a building on the left, there was no building there, and there were two trees in front of it, and you can see the couple of trees here as well. And then you can see a building in the middle with no trees in front of it, and then you can see the building on the right where you have one tree and two trees, and again one and two. And in the distance you can see a very long building which I have identified as a medical facility, and you can see it all the way there. So this is the one that it's highlighted in green on my satellite imagery here. Distances between everything. I want to give you an idea of the distances between the town I was given as a possible location of the IDPs on July 12, 2016 and the actual coordinates of the photos. The map below illustrates the various areas in blue or purple or whatever this color is. I marked the border of the town of Kajukeji as claimed by Google Maps. A few kilometers south of it you can spot a marker with a star, so this one here. That was where the Facebook user checked in on May 3rd, 2016. Only 500 meters south of it with a camera marker, so this one here, I found the exact location of where the photos were taken on July 12, 2016. So this is my geolocation. According to Google Maps, the people would have taken a bit over 20 minutes by car to reach the border of Uganda from where they were seen on the photos on Facebook. As most people were on foot, it would have taken three hours to walk the same 15.7 kilometers. So the answer to all our questions. Now that we have figured out the coordinates and have seen where everything is in relation to one another, we can attempt to answer the questions we had at the beginning. I'm not sure if they were exactly questions, but whatever, I wanted to know everything. So the Facebook user tagged their post as being in Equatoria, South Sudan, correct? This section is part of Equatoria, South Sudan. It did not help me at all because there's so much of it. The initial KK probably refers to Kajukeji, the name of the town I was given. Probably does, it was not helpful. The people were moving towards Uganda, which is 20 minutes away. Mostly correct, it would have taken a bit over 20 minutes by car, but most people were walking, which would have taken 3 hours. There's a place called Kansuk, some kilometers from the town. No idea, never found it, it did not help me at all, I didn't even look for it. And the user is near their place of work. Yes, the person was likely working at the medical center across the street visible on the photo. From checking out this user's profile, I found out that they were a doctor originally from Uganda that between March and August 2016 worked on the medical center a few kilometers south of Kajukeji. Their photos were shared on Facebook at 6.20 a.m. local time as they were waiting to start their workday. According to an article by the BBC published on July 8, 2016, four days before the people were seen walking towards the Uganda border, a violent clash erupted in Juba, the capital of South Sudan. Heavy gunfire was reported between soldiers that were loyal to Riek Mashar, South Sudan's vice president, and soldiers loyal to Salvar Kir Mayardit, the country's president. In the afternoon of July 12, 2016, on the same day that the photos were taken, the ceasefire between both parties was declared. As a result of the conflict, 270 people died and thousands fled, many by crossing the border to Uganda. The ones in the photos on Facebook were just a few of the many. So conclusion, sometimes the fastest way to geolocate the photo is to forget about it and instead focus on the person behind the camera. If we can track down their movements, there's a very good chance of being able to narrow down our search area. This will enable us to focus on a smaller area and get to the correct coordinates much faster. Would I have been able to geolocate the photos without tracking down the user? Most likely. Would it have taken me a lot longer? Absolutely. <laughs> Why do the hard way we can do it the smart way? I hope my explanation on how to use the check-in option on Facebook to track down people's movements in order to geolocate their photos was useful. Thank you for listening. Sophia. P.S. Please, please don't stalk people.